if we hit a deer with a jet, <laughs> well, I bet we don't get invited back. <laughs> Do you know where to go? I, I honestly don't remember. I think I met him in the parking lot when I flew out of here. I'm just here for a good time. It'd be like a drone, but bigger. You come in a little bit faster than the other ones. Time to go through security. Well, that's the exit, so I'm assuming it's on the other side. Yeah, you can't enter that way. Think we can crop dust with it? I don't know if we could uh, put booms under there. I don't know. I don't know what the jet will do for the, yeah, for the spray. Yeah, I wouldn't be. Might be a little too fast. Someone didn't dress for success. Hey, I'm good. Cold just a mindset. All right, get up there. Get up for me. You get yep. In. Yep. Get I'm in. Going first, Pappy. That's all you. I'm going in. Oh my goodness. Well, we're in here. That's later. Land, this your first flight? Oh, yeah. You're spoiled. Yeah. How far can you fly this? I mean, can you go out across the ocean? Hawaii? No, not this one. Not that one. No. This thing might make it to LA if you're empty. Oh, okay. Okay. Was that refueling you mean, or you had to stop refuel? That was yeah. with no weight. Oh. Blow into the manual inflation tubes attached to the vest. Get it figured out? I got it figured out. I don't know if I'm allowed to drink this water or not. What? Get kind of thirsty. I think you can probably drink it if you want. Hey, if you puke. <coughs> oh, she's got some torque. Oh, she's got some torque. A little bit of power to it. Yeah, oh okay. shit. We're moving now. <laughs> oh, we're up. We're up. Oh, <laughs> so big planes don't take off that fast. Like a lot bigger runway. I can see home. Way over there is home. Man, everything looks so small. We aren't even high up yet, Lana. I know, it's so much small. It's one of the many solar farms in the area. It's just as ugly. So you may be wondering, what are we doing in a private jet? So our channel sponsor, the logo that plays at the beginning of every video, Ag Kim Solutions. The owner of that company, John, he called me a couple weeks ago and said, hey, are you going to Louisville? I said, yes. Would you like me to pick you up in the plane and come take a tour of the plant? Yeah. Yeah, I think I would. So here we are. This is our first experience flying in a private jet. His first experience flying entirely. I don't think Dad's flew for probably 50 years. Have you ever flew? Yeah, it's been 45 years. A little bit different? A little bit different. Now, BJ was invited, but BJ and his wife are scared of flights. Or BJ's wife is scared of flying, I think. They're driving down. See like a roadway truck or something like that. Yeah, like Dorn or Pitt, Ohio is our okay. big one in Ohio, or FedEx Freight. You know, those uh, those are our main companies. But it depends on the region in the United States on which one we use. And not Amazon yet. Not Amazon yet. <laughs> we do have some uh, Uber Freight. Uh, oh, no 
No kidding. Yeah. So what does the process work like if I call in and order Kim? I mean, is it coming in out of this office then? Or you said you had a few different locations across the country. Yeah. So. If, if you're going to get, like, pallets picked together, uh -huh. it all comes out of here. We have warehouses for our totes where we bring that in, and then we'll have these. They're basically at freight carriers' hubs. And we have the freight carriers, they'll bring them in together. So when it goes to the farm, it, it all gets shipped together, like okay. all in one packet. So does it get sorted in, in here then and bundled in together? In here, like these pallets, like you can see there, and okay. I'll, I'll show you more of, where we have, you know, farmer gets, you know, a uh, bunch of different products uh, going together. We'll, we'll sort them here and put them together. So this is our only location that we basically do that. The other locations that we have, we just uh, the pull totes out of, basically. And we get our major products to come in by the semi into those locations. That way we can be a lot more efficient on our, our shipping that we do. Everything that's in here will go out of here today and I have two shifts, you know, one during the day and one during the night. And uh, at the end of the day, most of the carriers come in and that's when they, they load them out. We carry about five. 550 products. Basically, we carry every product for corn and soybeans by all manufacturers. So, kind of nice, you know. We, uh, you, you've got every choice with our company. And what we do is, out of the 550 that we carry, we stock about 125 year round, and those are our major, major ones that we sell a lot of. And we'll have those in stock uh, all year round. To start out. stuff like sharpener balance flex or anchor which is generic first rate we don't have as big a quantity so we keep we got two areas where we keep those type of products so just lower rate products lower rate this. products but products that we do sell quite a bit of that we will keep in stock you know so you see, Sounds like the expensive shelf. Yeah, this is definitely, <laughs> definitely expensive shelf. <laughs> yeah. Think you could back a semi in there? Oh, yeah. Your dad couldn't. Being in the chemical business for 25 years, I'm not a real big fan of new stuff because nine times out of ten, what I've found is uh, all it does is cost more. And only one time out of ten, it pays off. So I'm not willing to take that chance until the chemical has a track record. And I'm very skeptical on new stuff because you said most of the time it just costs you more in dollars and you don't gain benefit. About 80% of the market is off patent anyway. And, you know, so it's kind of a hard sell for me to bring stuff in new. And, you know, I want to see a track record on it. And one of the ones that... Uh, <laughs> Which makes it so that I really don't like it all that well, but if it pays the farmer, that's what I'm after. I want something that pays the farmer and it shows some really good results. Here's some more of my our, these shelves. These are like our you know smaller volume products that we keep in stock. And then we go into these next two rooms, and these are pretty much our higher volume stuff that we always keep in stock. We've got the shelves here, the shelves here, and then I've got two rooms, and in these two rooms is our most highest volume products. And so we're always pulling off of these to make those pallets, and when we, we, we've got our night crew that ends up coming in and they replenish our stock here. So we've got the excess stock, and I'll show you where that is, uh, where they bring it down. But this room and this other room I'll show you, basically where my guys will pull in the orders, you know, so they'll have custom uh, shuttle for like Brown or Larson Farms, and then it goes straight to you. So this is where we're pulling that stuff. And these are all our top selling products, and they're top selling for a reason because 
they're the best value for the farm. One thing that I think we really do well is when we have generic products, which 80% of our stuff is, we pull in you know, all the manufacturers, all the top manufacturers, and get them to bid against us to get the business. And that gets the prices down. And we're definitely, we look at, just like Clefit, and you have you know, 15, 20 companies that make that product. And we get Tigris, we get Adama, you know, they're all, we're looking at all the, all the top manufacturers and they go against each other and we get them to get the very best pricing on this stuff. And I think that's a big advantage of what we do over like a co-op. The co-ops, they just, they don't even look around. I know for us, when we switch, started switching to generics, I think that first year we saved about sixty thousand dollars in chem prices. Yeah. So yeah. it's been uh, been a huge and seen no ill effects from it either. And then the second phase on that is like what I was telling you. Not only the generics, but this is like a prime one. You know, Raptor. Uh, it's uh, it can vary from uh, two hundred to six hundred dollars a gallon, and you got a good manufacturer. Uh, you know, you want to go with the closer to the 200, you know, yeah, yeah. it makes a big difference. This is our main pulling area, and then we've got another room back here is our main pulling area, and like I said, this is where we're putting everything together, you know, during during the process to get ready for shipping. So for the non-farmers on the channel, like some of these chemicals that are in totes, do you mind, like, I guess, explaining why, like, it would be more advantageous to buy a chemical on a tote versus on a pallet of jugs? Yeah, the main thing is uh, you've got one point uh, you can pull out of and uh, uh, you don't have a bunch of jugs empty in the end and it's just a lot more efficient. Definitely the, the bigger farmers are the, are the main users of the totes. Each one of these totes on average they'll do like over a thousand acres. So, yeah. you know, you can see as, as you go through thousands of acres that we're representing here, which is a bunch. Yeah. We, we have about, I believe, about 5% of the U.S. market now. Okay. Yeah. So things like we use in totes would be like glyphosate, um, 2,4-D, AMS. So things that we're using a lot of, like you said, some of the sh smaller rate stuff that we've seen on that first shelf, we're not going to be getting a tote of that. How long did it take to get this down? I mean, you say you've been in it for 25 years. I mean, it seems like everything runs like a well-oiled machine now. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's just a matter of uh, learning, you know. How many states are you guys in now? 42 out of 48. Okay. Don't think they have many corn and soybeans in those, <laughs> gotcha. six, in those six states. But. That is a door. So these are these are guys that are picking up in truckloads and the products that we move in and out in truckloads. We generally have, I guess we must have moved out most of the glyphosate, but we have two loading docks here, and this is where we uh, move out where they're like single truck loads. So is all this chemical going to farms, or is it all, there some of it going to retailers also? We're about 80% farm and 20% retail, so, you know, the majority of it would be farm. Okay. Just trying to think of how to convey how many acres worth of... Of a product we just seen it it's a lot now some of that product is going to be mixed with other products we're seeing but there's a lot of equal acres worth of uh, chemical in there I mean a lot this is kind of a holding area for uh, the orders that have got extra stuff that are going with it you know so this gets cleaned out about once a week we could farm a lot of acres with this much chemical dead uh, oh, employees yeah, running employees. employees very efficient company One end of the building to the to the next. Holy cow! But these are basically all orders that are uh, just in holding. Later shipped in holding. So once they get them made, they bring them up here. They'll have your name on. Landon, go find the Brown Farms one. <laughs> No, if it's in alphabetical order, I'm assuming it's that way. So what we, how we organize these up here, we uh, group it into weeks of the month. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth week of March, first, second, third, fourth, and then we have rows, and then we have our night crews for that week. They'll bring them downstairs and then we go out here. But 
And there's yeah. an elevator over here that forklifts ride on. That's crazy. Yeah. How many square foot of warehouse space do you have here? About 500,000 square feet here in Indianapolis. That, that's a fair amount of space. A lot of square feet. <laughs> so for reference, the building we're building is 14,000 square feet. <laughs> I fit in here a few times. Also, there's another loading dock up the second there's, story. On each end of the building, it's got like 20. And that's not in our space. It's actually in the uh, fellow leasee space, but we're friendly with them. And, uh, and actually, we let them store stuff. This is actually our space. We let them store okay. their stuff in here in exchange for you know, them letting us use the loading dots. It's a good relationship. Yeah. Pays to know your neighbor. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Basically, all of this space right here is dedicated to is protecting the farmer and you know, so no matter sure that they get the product come spring, if they're, because a lot of guys, they pay in December and they want in the spring. So you can 100% sure, make, make yeah. sure that it's here and they've got it. Like if we had ordered glyphosate last year and then glyphosate got scarce and we didn't take delivery of it, it's sitting up here with all these other totes. So that, that is right. pretty comforting to know. Yep. And it's like fertilizer. A lot of guys last year were, it, it better be on our farm right now or because we're worried we won't have it. Don't have to worry about that here. Well, definitely they know, I mean, no, by looking here, if, if they've got it with Ag Chem, it's going to come. And, you know, we keep it here. Jacob does a great job of putting the names and organizing all this stuff. And we know exactly where it's at. And when that time comes, we'll just roll it down to the downstairs and get it out of here. We've been gaining every year for the last 25 years. And of course, you know, the, the, the hallmark is a repeat customer. And we, we have really strong repeat customers, over 3,000 farmers in the United States, and they just keep buying, probably for a good reason. You know? <laughs> yeah. I know any time that we've called and talked to you and had a question, I mean, I've always enjoyed our conversations, like you say, extremely knowledgeable on every herbicide, insecticide, and fungicide you can imagine. <laughs> so everything will be turned around in four months. Everything, and that's the longest period. Generally, it's you know a 30-day turnover. Wow. So when they ask me if you have new chemicals, yeah, we have new chemicals because we wouldn't get it in if it wasn't going to move. <laughs> I know it seems months. like some of the big retailers will say things like, well, that's old chemical or anything like that. Right. But we don't, never have any old chemical. And the only thing I have in inventory is something that we're moving a lot of. So every one of these pallets will be moving in the next four months. That is crazy. <laughs> that's a lot of forklifts. <laughs> John, what happens if a forklift driver punches a hole in one of those totes? What's We've got a procedure, you know, a safety operating procedure that we do, but I have really good employees and it's very rare that it happens. Okay. So, John, if a viewer was to want to get a hold of you on Kim, what's the best way to get in touch with you guys? Um, the best way is by phone and go to the website and... Uh, Which there's a link to that in the description. Yeah, and then uh, call because, uh, you know, actually our web prices, we don't stay as up to date. And if you're closer to our hubs, you can get cheaper prices. So the best bet is to call on the phone to get the... Okay. Uh, the, so like the flyer circuit, or didn't you guys used to put out a flyer every now and again? Or yeah, every we six did. months or so? Is, 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 is it pretty up to date or still call for um, final prices? The flyer prices? is more up to date. The problem has been with the mailing system here lately. It takes forever to get those out. Yeah. So we've been doing less and less of that because the mailing has been... Uh, So we about 420 mile an hour then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Down low, yeah. It gets faster up top. Yeah, he was saying coming back from Colorado, you hit 590 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. 